Welcome to Arts Beyond Museum. I'm Khan and I'm your curator for this series, Arts Beyond Museum. Now, museums, are they places to actually collect art and exhibit them? No, museums, they are places to collect art and show them to the people. But what if for some period of time, people around the world, they can't go to the museums? What should we do? Should we let art, perhaps for years, or maybe even decades, to go into the dark ages? No, we should bring art beyond museums to the people. We should bring art beyond museums to you. Now, in this series, we will be exhibiting Master Yun's Feng Shui paintings, along with Singapore's historically significant, beautiful and amazing places that people in Singapore and friends around the world should and could visit. Let's go. For those of us who are new and was wondering, oh, what is Lotus on Water? Who is Master Yun? Who is Master Yun Longzi? Let me explain. This is Master Yun Longzi, and he is a sixth generation Feng Shui master in his family. In 2006, inheriting all the wisdom and knowledge from the family, he founded Lotus on Water. Now, since young, Master Yun has been practicing art and in 2019 was recognized by China CCTV. They made a special documentary about him and gave him awards such as Achievement in Arts Awards, gave him titles such as Yi Qing Gold Medal, Master Award, and so on. Master Yun is also the first artist to be invited onto the Great Wall of China to have an art exhibition. Now, till date, at this moment we are speaking, Master Yun already has 14 major art exhibitions in different parts of the world. Today we are along the Singapore River. I'm on a boat ride. Uh, if you can see behind me, that's the very famous Club Key. Uh, great transformation, it used to be something else in the past. Today, it's the place to be. It's a super, super vibrant night spot to be. If you come to Singapore, or if you are already in Singapore, this is one place you really want to check out, right? So as I was saying, we're along the Singapore River, and this river is where all the magic and all the prosperity of Singapore began. This is also along this river, where the founder of uh, what we call modern Singapore, uh, Sir Stamford Breakfast, landed in Singapore. And uh, one of the significant things that you will see along this river is that you will come into close contact with many regions, many, many different uh, regions. And a lot of them have witnessed the evolution and progress of Singapore throughout the years. It is these bridges that uh, brought Singapore together. Uh, some of the bridges are very well known behind me. There's this bridge called Reed Bridge. Uh, used to be uh, Merchant's Bridge. And now it's the place where people will like entertainment. They'll hang out on their bridge all together. And just in front of me, there are bridges. They'll connect both sides of Singapore in the past and today as well. From the north side uh, to the south side, the merchant side, the commercial side and the political side, bridging them together. And that's what these bridges have done for Singapore. What has this got to do with Master Yun's Feng Shui painting? What has this got to do with Master Yun's Feng Shui art? Master Yun's Feng Shui art is also a form of a bridge. In fact, since Master Yun's first public exhibition, he has been bridging in different realms with different aspects and different cultures over different timing. Let me explain. Master Yun's Feng Shui painting bridges time. What do I mean? Uh, if you look closely at Master Yun's painting and his artworks, you will find that it's very difficult to say that is this a classical Chinese painting? Is this a modern painting? If you look up close, you can see resemblance, you can see techniques that belong to classical Chinese paintings. For instance, you can see the black ink, which is by Pine Soot Ink, 
those who are well uh, adept with arts, you will know that, oh, this is the how the Chinese people will use calligraphy brushes to paint. And you see the seals that has vermilion, you see the calligraphy that's in the edge and the background over here. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like an absolute classical Chinese paintings of bamboos, you know, of mountains and waters. You see it's a vibrant piece of art and you see materials that are different that you don't see in traditional Chinese painting. In fact, in these paintings, in Master Yin's art, he has employed different, different techniques, including oil painting, layering techniques, layers after layers. If you look closer, you can feel the 3D effect into it that once Master Yin dance a layer, he has to wait for it to dry and then another layer is applied on, a different material, a different colouring, a different material and so on. And therefore, it's not just a classical Chinese painting, it is also a modern painting. These two techniques or the various techniques are together connected and bridged in one piece of Master Yin's work. Another interesting aspect in Master Yin's art that bridges different aspects would be one of the very important material that he uses. And if you see clearly, hope it appears the same on the camera, that if you see something that is glittering, you are correct. That is gold and that is real 24K gold. And the white ones that are glittering, that is real silver. So actually in Master Yin's painting, we have a few different kinds of gold. What you see here, that's 24K gold. Some of them will have 18K gold to create the different layer and texture and the silver as well. Now, this is an important aspect of Master Yin's art and this is also why it bridges time. Gold is something that can transcend time. In fact, I understand that since people knew about gold, the amount of gold back then and today, they are about the same. Three Olympic pool size. That's it. No more, no less. So something like this with Master Yin's art, with the gold and silver, is something that will actually transcend time reaching reaching what we had before and today since we are talking about this gold and silver and especially the gold a little bit on sidetrack to uh, history of art um, in the history of art there aren't many people who actually used so much gold as master Yin's paintings it was first used predominantly in ancient egypt uh, when they were paints for the people who passed on the pharaohs uh, it was also used during the Middle Ages to paint um, in religious paintings. And of course, in modern art, perhaps a more famous one would be Gustav Kimt, Austria painter, who used a lot of gold to uh, present his emotions and his uh, art. Uh, now, but none has used gold uh, like Master Yun. Uh, different layerings, different styles. With gold as one of the key materials used in Master Yin's painting, you can be assured that Master Yin's painting can be kept for a very, very long time. And if you look actually closer, every single ingredient that is used in this painting, it is very fine and it's very, very high quality. Something that would not erode over time easily. For instance, the paper, you see, is not simple rice paper. It is what we call Dong Ba paper, a very special kind of paper that can take thick layers of colorings and will not erode or rot easily over time. And as you can see, for those of us who are more uh, into Chinese painting, you can see that there are actually no gaps or what we in Chinese call Liu Bai. We don't have empty white spaces on the paintings. Because if we have empty white spaces on the paintings, over time, it's easy for them to decay, for them to have yellow spots. Uh, but most of the areas on Master Yin's paintings, they are actually covered with different layers of color splashing, gold and silver, pine soup ink, and so on. So you can assure that this is a painting just like Singapore River and the bridges that have witnessed history. They will endure time and they will bridge past and present. Now we know that with the materials that Master Yin used and the style that he paints, Master Yin's painting is connecting through time and the places that he has been for exhibitions, he's connecting through space with Netherlands, with Spain, with the Great Wall of China. Now, there's an other connection that Master Yin's art is establishing and that is visual media with Le Hong Paris Champagne. Most of the time, art is only for the visual. Probably you hang a painting, 
in the gallery or in the exhibition and you, your, your eyes get to feast on it. But with Mastering's painting, it's not just that, you get to taste it as well. Of course, I'm not asking you to go and lick Mastering's painting. I'm talking about this, La Hong Paris Champagne. What I have with me is La Hong Paris La Cuvée. Only from the finest grapes with the freshest taste. Long Perrier is established in 1812 and for all these 200 plus years they have not worked with any other artist before and the first artist they worked with is Master Yun That is a true connection Connecting, bridging, bridging visual arts and art for the taste that's something and in fact actually on Mastering's painting what you see here are cranes and actually in the background many layers of color splashing actually contains La Hong Paris champagne sometimes Mastering might put the coloring into the champagne and will pop it and let the color fly all over the canvas and that is something that makes Master Yun's painting super valuable and super rare because it simply can't be duplicated. Let's take a look at this painting. We have here uh, Fu Tian He Di Tu Si Lie. On in English, we have it as Greetings to Heaven and Enrichment of Earth. This series of painting is amazing because this is the exact series that went up to the Great War of China. So if you are looking to collect one of Master Yun's paintings, which series you should go for as of now? If this is still available, please go for this. Why well, you can break your friends. The same series of paintings went up to the Great War of China. And you look at the painting. Of course, we were talking about when it goes in the daylight, you can see the cranes. And when it goes into no light and goes to a UV perspective, you see that these cranes, these peonies, they turn into galaxies, they turn into heavenly bodies, they turn into stars and Milky Ways. That is also a connection. It's a connection of yin and yang, connection on day and night. So what you're buying or what you are collecting is not just one painting, it's actually more than one painting. It has a different view to it, right? And the thing about nighttime is this. Many of us will take that, oh yeah, okay, you know, we're going to sleep the part of the day, we're not doing anything in particular. But actually, we can dream at night and our dreams might come true. And that is part of the connection we are talking about with Mastering's painting. Can you imagine if you place this painting at home, probably in your bedroom, and at night when you're about to sleep, you're on the UV light and you go off to sleep. The dreams and prosperity of this painting shall go into your dreams as well. And then daylight appears, that shall become the reality. Let's take a look at this painting. We have one crane here, as usual, two cranes. One crane, looking over here, and over here, actually, we see void. We see a lot of colours, but there's no peonies, there's no leaves, there's no nothing. The other one is looking upon himself, and of course, the, the cranes are painted with 24K gold. It tells us a story that one can always look at itself, and one should, for the prosperity and treasures that it has. One should also look outwards into the abyss, into the unknown, for more prosperity and harmony and this is the greetings to heavens and enrichment of earth 59 number 59 cheers to connection The Arts Beyond Museums series and Master Yun Longzi's Feng Shui Art are proud to be sponsored by La Hong Perrier. For 200 over years, La Hong Perrier has not worked with any other artist before. When you purchase a piece of Feng Shui Art exhibited in this Art Beyond Museums series, you will also be getting a complimentary set of five different specially selected cuvées of La Hong Perrier Champagne. The La Cuvée, the Cuvée Rosé, Brut Millesimi, Demisec Harmony, and the Cuvée Grand Siac. 
so that you can enjoy the taste of elegance while basking in the prosperity of Mas Dune's feng shui paintings and calligraphies. Cheers to prosperity and elegance.